Hey guys, in this video, you're gonna learn how to dig. Digging is one of the first skills you learn in volleyball and it's one of the hardest ones to master. So I'm gonna make this video and hopefully help you reach mastery faster. Let's go. Before we get into anything else, let's go through the absolute basics and that's how to hold your hands. I call this one, two, three passing because it's one, two, three. See how my thumbs just came together like that? Let me show you again. One, two, cross those fingers, stamp down with your thumbs. Now my thumbs aren't together, they're nice and flat, just like that. The reason why we do this is because we wanna try and create a really flat surface on our forearms around this area here. Because we wanna try and use that place as a passing platform. You're gonna hear that word a lot in volleyball, passing platform. This thing here is your platform. Now take a look at my elbows. Look how close together they are. I'm trying to make this platform like as flat as a table. It's not gonna be very helpful if my pass is like this because when the ball bounces on this area, it's gonna go crazy and all weird. So when you're doing it, try and have your hands as flat as possible. Look how I'm trying to get my arms as flat as possible. So one more time, one, two, three. Not this, not this, this. Nice and simple. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go through our digging keys. These are the keys to your passing success. As always, some of them are simple, some of them are a bit harder and will need more practice. This breakdown of digging is gonna help you out a bunch. Key one is arms like logs. Arms like straight logs. Yeah, the straighter our arms, the better. If there's any bend in it at all, that's gonna result in some, uh, maybe an injury. Because look, if I'm passing like this, the ball's gonna come down, bounce here, Ugh, straight into my face. Do you want to get hit in the face? I don't. So please have your arms like straight logs. Even when you're passing on the side like this, take a look at my arms. Do they bend at all? No. -uh. My arms are nice and straight like logs. Keep that in mind. Every time you pass, even when you get good enough to dive, your arms are going to stay like logs throughout your whole journey as a passer. Key number two is eyeball passing. Now, what I want you to think about is eyeballs at the end of my hands, around here. I'm gonna edit some in, because I don't have a pen to draw them. I'm sure they're gonna look really serious and sensible. Now, a practice you can get into is drawing eyeballs onto your thumbs in these areas here. You can just imagine them, but it's fun to draw them. The reason why that's a good idea is because wherever those eyes are looking, that's where the ball's going to go. So let's say the eyes are looking this way, two eyeballs looking that way. That's exactly where my pass is going to go. Don't believe me? Check this out. Look. Look how the eyeballs looking that way. That's where the ball went. Let's take a look at another one. This way. How simple is that? We don't need to think about, oh my goodness, how do I aim this thing? We only need to think about, where are these imaginary eyeballs looking? Because wherever they look, that's exactly where the ball's going to go. A good practice to get into is when you fail a pass. So when you're trying to pass and the ball just goes crazy, have a mental check-in at where those invisible eyeballs are looking at the end of your pass. It'll make a lot of sense why the ball keeps getting shanked because I bet you those eyeballs are probably looking somewhere else, not at your target. Make sure these eyeballs are looking at the target and your target is the setter or the setter position. So if I wanna pass this way, eyeballs looking that way. If I wanna pass this way, eyeballs looking that way. If I wanna pass over my head, where do the eyeballs look? They need to be looking over my head. Take a look. See how the eyeballs looking that way. It makes sense. 
It just makes sense. Key number three is the gunslinger stance. <laughs> Look at this stance. It's pretty much perfect, isn't it? Look, I'm bending my knees. My hands are out in a ready position. Volleyball's all about being ready and being efficient. So if our hands are where they're supposed to be, that's perfect. I don't want to pass like this. Why would I pass like this? Because then I need to bring my hands in. Oof, I need to bring my hands in this way. Look at my gunslinger stance. My hands in the perfect position. Efficient to dig, efficient to set if I need to. But for this exercise, obviously, you're gonna be passing. So bend your knees, get your guns out, and go to the shootout. It's high noon. The reason why I want you to bend your knees while you're passing, it makes it really easy for us to change our direction and our energy. Up high, we don't have any space for our muscles to push us forward. So stay low, and that sort of loads up our legs so we're ready for any attack. The next key is your three-step crab shuffle. I want you to act like a crab, and crabs shuffle around. I'm a crab, I'm a crab, I'm a crab, shuffling around. But I'm adding the idea of three steps. Now, if the ball is coming to my right side, I'm doing three steps every single time, yeah? It keeps it simple, it makes me move, and it makes me adjust. So this is what it looks like. I'm going one, two, three. Yeah, that's my three-step crab shuffle. I'm a crab. So, ball coming on the right. One, two, three, bang. It gets you moving. On the left side, look. Left, two, three, bang. Every single time. No matter what, I always encourage you to do a three-step shuffle, even if the ball's half a meter away. In my experience, passing in my midline is really, really efficient. And I get a really good pass when I'm right behind the ball. Yeah? So if the ball's coming along, bang. It's always easy like that. Whenever I start venturing out here, the efficiency of my pass gets worse and worse. So to adjust, instead of poking my hands out like this, I just do a little shuffle now. One, two, three, and I've got that midline pass where I get such efficiency out of it. It's so cool. This is how I think about it. Your pass is like your eyes. When you're focusing on something, it's in focus, you see it. The further out into your peripheral, the less focus it becomes, yeah? So you're right now, you're in focus to me. I can see it. Just like my pass, you'd be in focus the further I get outside into my peripheral area, the less focused I am on that ball and the less efficient my pass is. That's how I think about it. So I try and force myself to get in position so the ball is always in focus for me. Does that make sense? I hope so. The next key is face the ball. When someone is serving, face the person who is serving. When someone is spiking from over here, Face the person who's spiking. Look at the ball. Face the ball. We don't want someone spiking over here. We're faced this way and we're looking this way. Uh-oh, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel efficient. It doesn't feel stable either. So this is what I want you to try. Face the ball and use your eyeball passing to angle to your target. Face the ball, eyeball to target. Those are all the basic keys you can practice to master your digging skill set. Keep all of them in mind, they're all very important. Now, these are the things I'd like you to consider. Number one, read the game. Now when we think about this and we put this into theory, all of these skills that you just learnt, 5% of your passing game. 5% of Libro's games. They're the best passes. It's only 5% of the game. The other 95% of the game is reading the game and planning, all right? So they're reading the ball, they're reading the players, they're planning what they're going to do. And 5% is the skills I just taught you. So please, when you're practicing, don't just think about this internal information that your body's doing. 
It's so important to continue to read the player. When I'm looking at the spiker, when I'm facing the spiker, you must read the spiker. You don't just look at the ball and say, oh, what's gonna happen? The ball doesn't tell you any information. It's the person who hits the ball that gives you all the information, right? So read these things, especially with spikers. Their approach, have they transitioned back? Are they running into the spike? If they're not, it might not be a very powerful attack. Next thing is shoulders. Are their shoulders twisted up? Are they gonna hit it really hard? If they're going up like this, the spike like this, there's no way they're gonna get a lot of power into that. They need to twist to get a lot of power. So if they're not twisting their shoulders, it's not gonna be a powerful attack. The next thing is watch and read their hands. If they're going up for the attack like this, do you think they're gonna get a lot of power out of it? Absolutely not. To get power from spikes and attacks, you need to wind all the way back. So as passes, read the players. Please read the players. You are gonna become a thousand times better when you learn to read the players. Not just the ball, read the players. The next thing I want you to consider is minimize your movements. The more we move, the more complicated our skill becomes. Yeah, digging's not supposed to be a lot of movement. It's supposed to be minimized, yeah? If we're passing like this, uh-oh, that's a lot of movement. So we should be passing like this, bang, or bang, yeah? We shouldn't be putting too much motion into this. If you're digging and your hands are going above your head, probably not minimizing enough movements. Try and keep it as simple as possible. You're minimizing as many movements as you can. The last thing I want you to consider is you gotta be quick with it. If you're not quick enough to the pass, you're always going to shank it. Shank it means fail the pass and the ball goes crazy. If we're too slow to get our hands out or if we're too slow to shuffle in, we're gonna fail. So be as quick as possible. A lot of the times I see people shank the ball, it's because they didn't get their arms there fast enough. Yeah, they were late, so that's why the ball bounced off here and went crazy. If you're quick with it, bang, whoa! Be quick, and you're gonna nail it, yeah? Wait in position, be prepared. It's so important, be quick with it. That was my guide on how to dig in volleyball. My name's Coach Hardy, I create content to make you the best volleyballer inside and out. If it was helpful, please consider telling me underneath that subscribe button. Maybe like the video as well. And yes, this is an updated video. I have a previous one out, but I rewatched it the other day, and yo! The video was a bit low quality, the audio was a bit low quality, and I just thought, let's just remake it. I've got a few new ideas and to put into the video. So, thanks for watching the video for a second time, and I really appreciate your support. If you wanna use any of these cool emojis down in the comment section, consider becoming a member. You'd be supporting the videos I make, and you'd also have these wonderful emojis. How cool is that? You get better when you practice, so go practice your passing. Good, Johnny!